He's already got one point from play. He set up the goal as well for Eddie Brennan. And he makes absolutely no mistake whatsoever. Yeah, he started brilliantly. You know, you have to say overall the Cork half-back line have got plenty of possession, but Shefflin is drifting all over the place and, you know, he's obviously Ronan Curran is, is trying to hold the centre and Shefflin is, is moving up and down both flanks. Cork go with the short puck out to the corner back and try to bypass the Kilkenny half-forward line, but when they bypass the half-back line, rather, then they run into the full-back line and Jackie Tyrrell is there. Out here as far as Chaffetz Patrick, is there any way through any of those lines of the Kilkenny defence? Two defenders go for the one ball, and in comes Fogarty for Kilkenny. Back out here once again towards Henry Shefflin, looking at the target, shooting it in haste and putting it wide. Well, he had ample time, I think, and he realises that now. But it's 1-4 to three points. Kilkenny with a much better start. Longer puck out this time, straight to Niall McCarthy. Again, it's Donal O'Cusack been very, very clever and intelligent in his use of the puck outs. Now, how will the rest of the team respond? Losing possession here to Char Fitzpatrick. It's James Ryle now, the substitute has come on for Brian Hogan. Huge one, goalkeeper comes, ball gets lost. Fogan is in after it, and it's in the back of the net. And Taggy does it again. Another one. That's two goals in the space of about five minutes. And Aidan Fogarty in the 22nd minute is in to get his eighth ever championship goal. This was lost in the wind. Goalkeeper dropped it down and Fogarty on hand to pounce and make it 2-4 to three points. What a start for Kilkenny. Yeah, Joe, you have to say Richie Power was very, very clever there. He didn't really go for the ball or he didn't tackle the goalie. You know, most lads would have run into the goalie and give away a free out. He left it out there, just kind of half went for the ball, half took the man and let the ball break and into the back of the net. Sean O'Gohalby against the team rated 7-1 to one on favourites. Kian McCarthy coming in after this one here. Out came PJ Ryan and the goalkeeper got the vital touch to it. Horgan now losing it. Ryles there as well. Stalemate broken up by JJ Delaney. Look at the number of court players surrounding him, but he still managed to get it out as far as Michael Fennelly. And Michael Fennelly makes a good 70, 80 metres down the field with that one. The backs again knock it down, but Henry Shefflin's waiting, lurking. Again out forward here as far as Aidan Fogarty, and Fogarty's got a goal and a point in the last two attacks. That's a goal and two points now for Aidan Fogarty. Yeah, again, Joe, what a score. J I don't know how JJ Lane got the ball in his hand back in the full back line. Passed out to Michael Fenley, and the ball is hit 90 yards. Shefflin picks it up, and again, instead of wasting the ball, short pass straight into my Aidan Fogarty's hand and over the bar. Brilliant, brilliant score. Well, everything is working well so far. Four of the Kilkenny players in the forwards have now scored. The only two without a score so far the captain TJ Reid and Owen Larkin, and they've been contributing handsomely. And I don't think Tommy Walsh has hit the ball yet, which is unusual, and they're going so well. Niall McCarthy doing a good job up that flank, but all the rest of the backs well on top, and Chaff Fitzpatrick hit, and Michael Fenley hitting a lot of ball in the middle of the field. But Shefflin really is the man that's making it happen. He's controlling everything there from centre-half forward. Well, if one part of uh, Brian Cody's team gets closed down for uh, maybe a short spell in a game, the others then simply raise their game. Now it's TJ Reid swiftly in there, broken down by, uh, uh, by Henry Shefflin this time. On to Michael Fennelly, and Fennelly is restrained. And there is a concern about uh, Henry Shefflin. Not exactly sure yeah, how the injury occurred here. So he came down very awkwardly there. Oh, yes. It could be the ankle, it might be the knee. It looked like the knee took the impact, and you know, I don't know if that's the crucial thing with the knee. Yeah. Everybody remembers that a few years ago in the All Ireland final. He was captain that day as well and was forced off before half time. A match where they also lost Noel Hickey before the uh, interval. But uh, immediate concern now for Henry Shefflin, just when everything was going well. Ahead by two goals and five points to three points. Well, it's the knee they're most concerned about. Yeah, Martin Comfort got ready very quickly there, so... Martin Comerford is the player being prepared, should he be required. But look at the players, Jerry. we're talking about here. James Wright can come in there at centre-back straight in. Uh, Martin Comfort, you have Michael Rice, I don't know how the hand is, Michael Cavanagh, players like that, you know, just all early medal winners, all stars, ready to come in. You That's know, uh, Michael, 25 minutes are gone in this match, and we were saying going into the game, you know, Kilkenny 7-1 to one on favourites to win it, and uh, 
we're saying surely no team in the semi-final is seven to one on favourites. But look at the scoreline: two five to three points. Yeah, and, and as I said, probably had three or four more chances to tap the ball over yep. the bar, but they kept attacking. Kept and a attacking. couple of goal chances. Well, that's it. they kept attacking, looking for the goal chances, and, and and then eventually they cropped up. You know, and that's you know that's they're so good they know they can do that. Um, they have that confidence in their own ability to just keep proving and proving and well, look for they're, the goal they're, they're moving the knee here, and the good news is that he's able to get back on his feet again. And Please God, it is not that knee that caused him all the bother two years ago. Or was it, it was three years ago, wasn't it, the game against Limerick? Yeah, oh. and I've been making this point all during the year. Last year, Kilkenny won the iron. Noel Hickey was injured, Brian Hogan was injured, Richie Power was injured, Henry Shetton was just back. That's the spine of their team right up to centre. They're all 100% fit issue. Now we see Brian Hogan gone off again today, but that's a huge difference to the team. They're anchored by fit men this year. And Richie Hogan could take over the freeze now and put it over the bar, he's got uh, his second point of the match Henry Shefflin is now coming off and uh, Martin Comerford is going to come on in his stead well he's walking off quite freely I'm looking at him and he's walking off okay, very disappointed no doubt but the indications are that it is not as serious as it was three years ago but then I'm not a medical person It's just that's the way it looks to me right now Owen Larkin Leaving it here as that ball is knocked in from a distance, a huge distance, Martin and it's Comerford put over the bar. And Martin Comerford, as you say, just in the match, approximately 30 seconds, and he's got his first point. And it's 2-7 to three points, and it's already running away from the Rebels. Don't look Cusack's puck out. Comerford again. Well, they bring him in a man off the bench who's probably just waiting for the opportunity to come in and show what he can do. Chaff Patrick lobbing it in here, batted out by Shane Murphy. Out into the middle, Tom Kenny leaving it there. Fennelly's rampant, and that's over the bar. His first point. Well, he was a peripheral figure last year, came in and played a few minutes at the end of the final, lifted the cup, and so on. But what a transformation this year! Michael Fennelly is assertive, he's showing what he can do. He's dominant, dodging around here, getting the scores. He's a confident player. Back in the half-forward line now, Cork tried to make some inroads. Kenny stopped there by J.J. Delaney, out again to Fennelly. He wants the ball, he's demanding it, playing it cleverly up here as far as Eddie Brennan. Getting it onto his left this time, and again he's miscued it. Got the goal after 17 minutes, five wides now for Kilkenny as well. The yeah. sat-nav not quite working. Oh, he's hit a couple of wides, but Mike, Michael Finley, I picked him up before the game. He's a player that I think is hugely impressive. And we know what sort of an athlete Tom Kenny is, but any bit of a breaking ball, he's onto it like a flash, and his striking has improved. There's JJ again, what a catch. Getting it ahead of Kian McCarthy. Well, it would be all very well for Cork to start making changes in their forward line, but they haven't got the ball into the forward line yet. Well, they're getting well beaten in the middle of the field and the half the half back line, even though Tommy Walsh say, hasn't been in the game much with JJ Delaney and you know they're just dominating Michael Fenley, particularly in the middle of the and Shah hitting an off of the ball. It's gonna be a line ball which uh, Ben O'Connor has come out to take and the indications when he comes out to hit this he might even fancy it trying to get over the bar, but it's a huge distance out. Loving it in inside towards Asaki, trying to break it down and onto it quickly. There was John Dalton. He's improved immeasurably as well this year. Jackie Turner we know all about. Up here towards Owen Larkin, trying to break it out. There was a foul there by John Gardner. It's going to be a free for Kilkenny. And the Cats fans all around Croke Park are just loving the opening 29 minutes of this match. Everything they have dreamed about. The rivalry between the two counties has been quite intense. Heightened by, uh, well, I suppose Don Logue's, Don Logue Cusack's book. And I suppose just the general rivalry in recent years, the fact that they were level pegging as competitors for most of the last decade, but then in recent years, Kilkenny have just stolen a march on Cork. PJ Ryan, big one in. Oh, it's taken again by Richie Power, getting there ahead of Owen Cadigan. That is some score. He's some player. This could be the player who could be the makings of this Kilkenny team, not just this year, but in future years. Real leader, great in the air, took it down brilliantly. Took a few steps maybe, but still got a bit of latitude and put over his third point. Yeah, Jaren, just the intelligence there, just come back out the field where the room was. You know, a lot of that was a turn that got blocked. He moved back out the field and turned over the bar. But I agree with you, I think he is the player that for the future. I think last year he would have been, except for the hamstring injury, and he's been a bit unlucky with injuries over the last couple of years.
Asaki takes this one down brilliantly ahead of Noel Hickey, but he loses it then. And Noel Hickey, as the crowd roar on their encouragement, up towards Richie Power again. Aidan Fogarty rolls it up with the lovely economy. Breeze gets a hold of it, however, and it carries to the left and it's gone wide. Goal and a couple of points by Aidan Fogarty already in this match. 28-year-old now from Emeralds, and there is uh, Brian Hogan. The shoulder is the problem, came in here.